This is a show that is all about giving young Europeans the chance to sit down and talk about the issues that really matter to them. We'll be talking about things like the European Union, what have they ever really done for us, um, cultural diversity, we're all different, but are we really all equal? We'll be looking into youth employment, because all I ever see on Facebook are, any jobs going, any jobs going? We're looking into that. And we'll also be looking into human rights, and I don't know clue what my rights are. And that's an issue, because I'm a human. <laughs> we are just through here. Let me open the door for you. Um, we're all in the kitchen right now, um, talking about the European Union. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, let's go through. The European Union is a mega mashup of 28 glorious nations, but are they really delivering? Let's chat, but I want to say hi to the crew first. I want to talk to you first. What's your name? My name is Francesco. And where are you from? I am from Italy. Okay, this is the rest of the crew. Say hi, crew. Waving to all the lovely people. Okay, let's go meet our panel. Um, try not to break the lights. Can you tell me your name and what you do, please? I'm Anita, Anita Welsh, um, and I work within the arts. I work with a theatre company. I am Daniel, um, Daniel Sabiangi, and I am doing product design engineering. I'm Doris, and I'm studying musical theatre. I'm Vanessa. And, and what do you do? I'm kind of currently unemployed. That's perfection, so am I. It's fine. <laughs> My name's Ian Francis. I'm a Liverpool City Councillor and I represent Anfield Ward and the party represents is Labour. My name's Colbia and I'm a student. My name's Maya and I'm a student as well. <laughs> My name's Candy. I'm also a student. Three students <laughs> and... Ryan, former student. <laughs> um, young director, uh, father with Vanessa over there. Okay, um, so I'm just going to kick this off with the title of the show, which is What Has Europe Ever Done For Us? And I want to direct it to you first. What do you think Europe has done for us? Um, well, I think it offers a lot of business to the UK and like it's got lots of exports and imports and it's like a good economic like sustainability for the UK mm. and we can rely on it when, you know, we're in trouble. And I think just it's just good for us. Mm. Raise your hand if you think we should stay in the EU. And <laughs> raise your hand if you think we should leave. I'm not sure. Anita, can I ask you a question? Do you think do you identify as European? I identify myself as a human. I'm be gonna be very <laughs> weird and very okay, like I don't okay. like to conform to any categories or boxes or whatever. Yeah, I the country I live in is part of the European Union, but that doesn't necessarily I am part of the European Union. I just happen to be in a country that is part of it. I don't support a lot of what they do, but again, I'm not against a lot of what they do. So that's why when you asked, put your hand up, are you for or against being in it? I never put my hand up for either because there are pros and cons for both being part and not being part of it. Ryan, what about you? Do you identify as European? I've been identified as British. British. But the thing is about it all is Britain and the UK is kind of like the nerdy kid at school who wants to be part of the cool group. Everywhere else in Europe is using the euro, it's all in one massive landlocked kind of state and we're kind of on the outside. So, in one sense, we want to be part of the European Union because we want to have all the equal rights and we want to do all that kind of stuff. We're going, no, 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 we won't have your currency. We want the pound. No, 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 we won't do that. We want this. We want more power. We're a tiny little island in the grand scope of things. As far as the travel, free travel, before there was tolls and that kind of stuff, people did that anyway. People went all over the world to learn and get different cultures. Just because you're part of the EU doesn't necessarily mean that you have this great privilege that you didn't have otherwise. When it comes down to whether I identify as European, there's how many bloody people in Europe? Mm. Do you know what I mean? We're not Europeans, we're humans. Mm. It's where we're from. I've got another question. Um, who here knows who their Euro MP is? I don't have a clue who mine is. No. no. I don't have a clue. So why do you think that is then? Do you think it's us not pursuing them and trying to find them? Or do you think it's them not trying to engage us? And it's a bit of both, isn't it? Oh. I think that so, okay, so I, I think it's a bit of both. It's a case of we're concerned with our own issues and in our own local communities and our own country. That we're like, well, that's Europe. That's over there. It doesn't matter over there. And then it's the case of 
the politicians and the people in the EU going, no, 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 don't get them involved. If they get involved, they're going to have too much power, they're going to have too much say, and it's just going to make our lives and our work harder. Because we kind of we kind of concentrate on the problems that are going on like right now in our country and we kind of we kind of secluded we can't we're not yeah we don't really see each other as properly connected and interlocked um that's probably why the, we don't really know that much about the european a lot of young people don't know about europe and, and politics in particular it's because it's not taught in schools you know political education was taken out and you know it should be brought back do you guys, do you guys agree? Because yeah. you guys are in school yeah. now, so... Yeah, definitely. Because, like, um, I want to take it for A-level, but they don't do that in my school. They don't do, like, politics as an option. Mm. And I think they should, because it is an, actually a really important topic. We're not, like, taught about it, and we don't, you know... It's not on social media sites. Yeah, you can follow your local MP or you can follow David Cameron or Ed Miliband, but you know, it's not really brought to our attention as much as we would like it to be. Can I so, just kind of go against what you said in terms of getting you, getting the message and the, what's going on in terms of politics across through media? I think people need to stop going on and thinking that young people just want media. We want conversations, we are growing adults in the real world and we can have a adult conversation about stuff that are affecting our lives. So I think this right now is great. We're here, we're actually having a conversation, human to human, um, expressing ideas and thoughts and feelings about what's going on in our lives. I'm not gonna say what I wanna say in 140 characters on Twitter mm. to people who aren't gonna respond to me. So I'd rather have the opportunity to speak to the people, see the people, mm. gauge their reaction and give my input and see the impact wow. that it has instantly, yeah. not on no media sites. Dorcas, do you agree with what what Anita just said? Yeah, I, I do actually because I was, um, I was sitting here when that point was made thinking, I thought I was a, being a strange teenager thinking I didn't really go on media. So I think like, that's a really good point. Like that's the best way to, to like get people interested. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So Maya and Candy, do you would you be okay with? <laughs> <laughs> would you be all right with them? Like say, a MP or MEP coming into your school and running like a workshop type thing, or would that be a bit too close to the comfort? Like a well, be too cool. I'm not really sure. Like I wouldn't do research about it myself. So do you think? Like, I need to be told, like, well, this is what's going on. Because I wouldn't, that, like, it just doesn't interest me to go and find out stuff myself about it. So I think that would be good, but I wouldn't want, like, really loads of information thrown at me at once, because mm. then I'd just lose interest. Yeah. yeah, do you agree? Yeah. I mean, because the way I see it is, like, if it was online, you can do those really quick. Have you seen them, like, gifts that are on, like, BuzzFeed and stuff? <laughs> with, like, really random stuff. If they had that, but with politics and, like, broke down, broke it down really simple for us to really understand it, I think it could be really beneficial. Um, but looking outside of the UK, um, and looking into what we were talking about with the Euro and stuff like that, I mean, the Euro has caused quite a lot of problems in other European countries. Mm. So, stemming from that, do you think that... Europe should abolish the euro? Uh, to, to, to go back to um, all individual currencies, I don't think that would be, pract that would be practical and the cost uh, of doing that um, would be just an astronomical amount. Would you be comfortable with having a single currency having to use the euro going to shops and stuff? Um. Or would it not really bother you? I think, I don't know, I, I, can't, I haven't got a reason, but I think I prefer having like pounds, like separate. I don't know, I just have this feeling that it's some, I wouldn't mm. like it. Yeah, cause I, I feel that um, it's kind of a, 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 a strange situation because um, by having like loads of countries with the same currency, um, there's got a good side to it, as in like everybody's got the same currency. Um, you, you like there's no weird currency exchange um, ratings or whatever. But the problem is, if the economy collapses, that's not just one country that's being affected. That's like a whole amount of different countries. Mm. So I, 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 I think I lean more towards just having the pound and having the euro. Sorry, I'd like to direct this question to Francesco. 
Because you are from Italy. I am. So what, um, what would you say drew you to the UK? For me, it wasn't a decision based on the crisis. Because when I moved, the crisis wasn't, didn't hit the country already. It was after I moved. But now I see a lot of people I know are moving away from Italy. Uh, I don't think it's only for the crisis. Is it also because just some jobs they don't, did not exist in Italy, so it's more a need to, to go away. I always see in the papers like the Independent and Guardian and whatnot that there's all this crisis and all these really bad things happening in all these countries, and then there's all this talk about immigration. And do you think that there should be some type of I don't know, like a limit on immigration? Do you think that there should be some type of talk about that? I think that we need to try and support and address the issues of why the, the people want to come here. If, if there's something that we can help and aid and support for them to do whatever they want to do where they are, then why can we not do that? Or if it is for a cultural exchange, why can we not support that they want to be here for a cultural exchange? If it is because they're in the middle of a war, why is the war actually still on? Don't get me started on the war. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it's very important to understand why, because that will kind of help us understand why a lot of stuff in our present day and our life and our situation in our country, our cities is happening and why immigration is such a bit, has a, such a big impact on us. Okay, um, so moving on, do you think that the UK should renegotiate the powers that EU have over it? It's a question between the moral and the lawful at this point about whether we don't have more power in the EU. I see it as it's all one world, we're all, part, we're all citizens of one great culture but now, if we've got to live by this structure of, okay, this is our country, but we want to have a say in what your country has to do. Mm -hmm. I agree wholeheartedly that we've got some say in like, the trade and that kind of stuff should be fair and equal. But to have more power and more say, how is that fair in the other countries? What makes Britain any different to have more power than anybody else? Whether a country has more or less power than anybody else, it doesn't matter. It should be equal power. If Britain starts like, like negotiating or requesting things, then like... France should be able to then negotiate and request things like you can't make it like unique to your country because then like all the other countries are going to want extra mm. they just want to keep going at it yeah it'll never stop <laughs> so you don't think we should renegotiate we just leave it as it is yeah. and just but then we'll be like oh but you never jumped in on that why do you want to jump in on something else so by show of hands who here has used or has not used their right to vote who's 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 voted Anyone vote? Not old enough Not to yet. vote yet. Not old enough yeah. to vote yet. Well, you plan on voting, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And who hasn't voted? Okay, oh, why? Can't. You can't <laughs> vote yet. So, why haven't you voted then? Why haven't I haven't um, voted yet because uh, I've only just like turned the age to vote. Right. So, I'm just waiting to vote. <laughs> so, what about you, Anita? Then? I know this is going to sound very wrong and I've had this discussion with many people but my vote is not going to change anything my vote isn't going to change anything okay. so what makes you say that because if I would have went and voted last time before we got the um, hung parliament my vote wouldn't have changed the outcome of that just to give you a bit of background though three generations ago the women sitting around this table wouldn't have been allowed to vote and there are people that really protested so that you could have a right to vote, so that you can make a change in the country, so that you can live in the country you want to live in. You know, people died for it, people of colour couldn't vote, and I'm just thinking, you know, of women of colour and of that gender, why you don't take advantage of that and think, yeah, my family, my ancestors have died to make sure that I could have the right to vote, and now you're sitting back and saying, you know what, can't be bothered. It's not I can't be bothered, it's I don't agree with any of what you're trying to give me. For me to vote, you, what are you giving me? I'm giving you power, what are you giving me? What are you helping me do as a woman? What are you helping me doing as a black woman? How are you supporting me as an individual? How are you supporting my career? How are you supporting my education? How are you su supporting my future? How are you supporting my children's future? What are you doing? for me to vote for you and give you the power and say over my life. What do you think about that? Because I know you're very passionate about politics <laughs> um, and voting and stuff. Well, so. like, there's a lot of individuals, obviously, in this country. Like, 
you know, a party can't say, oh, I'm going to cater just for you and then I'm going to cater just for you because how many decisions can they make just based on one person? Because we are a country and you've got to make a de decision for a country, not just for an individual. It's not an individual's need because just as you say, it's not one person's vote, it's a collective's vote and it's not just my need, it's a need of the collective. Okay. I so, was going to so. say, yeah, uh, like... I think not voting is just as bad as like voting. If you get me, like you don't want to support anyone. You don't like you don't want to give any like people don't want to give anyone the power. But if you're giving someone that could have, as it like someone that could have done something, just one thing that you agreed with, it, even though the rest of it you don't agree with. I'm the worst explainer ever. I think, I think, <laughs> I think, I think, I think you're right. I think you're right. You voted for one, like the person that sort of mm. ticks the most boxes. Do you think that maybe you, there's room to negotiate, maybe change some of their other policies? Yeah, like rather than letting someone. You and the collective more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you, if you didn't do that, then you'd let someone who is I'm totally against everything, everything that, that you want yeah. it to get the power. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, I do agree with it. I just don't want. I believe in a world where everybody is equal, so everyone has a shared power. So why am I giving someone the governance over me? It's an individual thing, and I'd never tell no one not to vote or to to vote. Like this is just me. Like I don't believe. So it. the people you're too young to vote haven't heard like both sides of the story. Yeah. What are you thinking? I didn't have to vote for like a mainstream party like Labour or Conservative. I could vote for like Green Party that. Maybe they won't be in power, but I've still used my vote. Right. What about you, Maya? Um, <laughs> I don't know, but like, if I didn't vote, I think I'd feel like I'm playing it safe. And like, if right. what I vote for then turns out not to be the best thing, I think I wouldn't want to vote again because I think it was my vote that made them. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I don't want to be put in charge of what happens. But like, I'd want to use my vote, but I'd have to like have a conversation like this so I can understand it a lot more. Can, can I just say, like, I don't understand why 16-year-olds um, aren't able to vote. Like, we are, we have to pay an adult price for the bus. We are able to live by ourselves. We are able to have a job. Yeah. Why are we then not allowed to do, make that? I think I think it also goes back to the um, to the thing where you said that not that many people know that much about politics, mm -hmm. and I def definitely think that we need to learn that from a very young age because I it took me ages to find out the difference between Lib Dem, Labour, and Conservative. <laughs> so like I think like loads like you, you we need to be brought up first like mm -hmm. properly understanding what politics is so we make the right decisions. Right. Yeah, um, I, I just wanted to ask you a little question. Like, what would be, what would life be like without politics? Mm. What do you think, just guys? What would life be like without politics? Without any party in power? Without anything? There's no like law then or any. Be a mess. We yeah. watch that film. <laughs> the page. Yeah, like it's just one yeah. <laughs> like that every day. Yeah, would you? Yeah. Because yeah. you need to have like a set ground, don't you? Thank you all for watching. Now we have a very special treat for you all. A Liverpool spoken word artist that goes by the name of Blue Saint. Round of applause for Blue Saint! Catch 22 is found in the integral and set areas of our constitution. A pollution fusing the fundamental bonds of rooting the good that we as a people wish to see. And in these diseased seas and shores of life that we breathe, we seem to see a new breed of oozing grief. Our human need is to view and speak about what we do and seek. So humor me for a minute as I peruse and look through the catch 22s found in the integral and set areas of our constitution. Just look at Kenya's institution, instituted in its grooves with a law that prevents uh, scores of asylum seekers, Somalians, from actually seeking asylum. Another catch-22, only 18% of women work in Saudi Arabia. I was astonished at how anomic and quite ironic it was the 70% of people in their schools and universities were females. What a catch-22. Thank you. I want to thank 
thank you all for coming, and I want to do a special thank you to you, oh, you Ian Francis, because we did reach out to every other party, you know, Conservative, Lib Dem, UKIP, BMP, mm. and you were the only one to respond and to come down here and meet all the young people and discuss. So I want to thank you so oh, much. Coming up, round of applause.